Welcome to everyone who's volunteered to be in our workforce. Today, we have four workers. There are two willing workers, Miguel and Jeff. And there is Blanche, who is the chief inspector and controller rolled into one. Rachel is our office manager. This is Carl, our illustrious boss. My name is Anne Margaret, and I'm the facilitator. So there are five of us who are responsible for running this company. You can have as few as two or as many as 12 players. The more players, the longer it takes for each worker to get at least two turns. On the other hand, you're apt to have more drama or humor with all the personalities involved. You'll notice there are spaces for six willing workers on the score sheet. You can also expand your staff to include these roles. Once you've picked your players, you can then play the game in front of any sized audience, even groups numbering in the hundreds. You can also tailor the game to your company. For example, if it's a manufacturing firm, choose a plant manager for the game and say you actually make the beads. If it's a service company, change it to an office manager and just process and ship beads. Okay, our company processes beads. We take orders from white beads from our customers and we ship them out. Now, as you can see, we have plenty of pretty white beads and a few red ones as well. These are flaws. They're problems. They're things that we wish we didn't have to contend with, but there they are. So in spite of the red beads, we have to ship our beads out, get them out the door, and ship them to the customer. The red beads represent flaws in the process, and one underlying message is that the world provides us with an unending supply of problems. Fix one, and another will come our way. Now, willing workers, this is the way we do things around here. You fill your daily quota by dipping the paddle in the beads. By the way, make sure that you hold this paddle at a 30 degree angle. Dip it into the beads. Gently agitate, extracting only white beads, leaving no holes. Bring it up gently, and Blanche, who's our chief inspector, will count them. You try it first. How many, Inspector Blanche? Ten. That's far too many. We have a goal here of three red beads per day. Can I ask who set the goal of three red beads? It was decided at the last executive meeting. Based on what exactly? Based on the fact that as boss, I said so. Of course, now that you bring it up, I think I'll change it to two. The new quota is two red beads. No more. Got it? Because you're the facilitator, you can set up the rules and problems any way you'd like them. You might tell the workers you want no red beads because there's absolutely no room for mistakes. Or perhaps you don't set a goal. Just tell them you want their best work and salaries and bonuses will be based on who has the least red beads in a given week. If you choose, you can also make the red beads represent real problems in your own company system, such as unanswered phone calls, lost records, communication breakdowns, or an unresponsive bureaucracy. Okay, Miguel, worker number one. This is your first day at the job. We're going to be looking very closely at your performance. Try with the paddle, remember the angle. Uh uh, remember, 30 degree angle. Inspector Blanche, how many do we have? Eight red beads out of 15. I'm afraid that's way above our quota. Our new quota is two. That's a really bad start, Miguel. Let's hope that our next willing worker is able to do a little better. Eleven red beads. Oh, not good. You're going to have to work harder and come up with less red beads. How do we do that? How do you get rid of red beads? Well, you'll just have to be more careful. Follow the correct procedures. Do it by the book and ship our customers only white beads. And when you dip the paddle, make sure that the paddle is a 30 degree angle, no more nor less. Got it? Okay, work of one. Miguel, it's your turn again. Ten this time? This is worse than your first day on the job. Your performance is going downhill. Do you realize that 50% of the people in unemployment can do far better than this? I suggest that you concentrate or I'm going to have to put you on probation. As facilitator, you want to incorporate into the game any strategies or manipulations that companies use. Use intimidation, 
guilt, praise that leads to overly high expectations, and the threat of job loss to keep the pressure on. And by all means, inject fear into the workplace. Fear is one of the most widespread management techniques used today. Four red beads still over the quota, but by far the best performance so far. In fact, so much better that I'm going to give you $5 if you can come up with less than four red beads next time around. And I'll give $5 bonus to any worker who can match that. You'd like a $5 bonus, wouldn't you? Well then, all you have to do is show me that you can come up with less than four red beads. Can you do that? I'll try. We need to do more than try. We need 110% from you. That's what we expect from all of our employees, 110%. I'm just not sure that's possible. Now, is that the right spirit to have? I just don't like to hear words like can't be done or won't work, especially when we know anything is possible. Six red beads. Let's see. Your scores have been eight, ten, and six. You're definitely improving, but the bonus wasn't for improvement. It was for less than four red beads. So no bonus for you. I don't understand it. You were the model for the rest of the company with four red beads. Now you've fallen to nine. What happened? I don't know. You can't control it. There's that word can again. I don't know. Just between me and you, are you having any trouble at home? Any problems with alcohol or drugs? Maybe you have a learning disability. We can get you some help, you know. We have programs. No, nothing like that. Well, you know you can come to me anytime. We're just like family here. Now, back to work. Let's show these people how to do it, okay? This is the last day. And as you can see, we haven't been doing real well. We tried a bonus program to no avail. We tried putting people on report, and there has been no improvement. I just don't get it. By now, everybody's getting the message that the workers have little control over the red beads, the problems. But they are in a position to help identify those problems if management would only allow that. When management instills fear, when they aren't open to worker involvement, both the workers and company lose. Well, what's wrong is that there are red beads and we can't help that. You say you can't help that? Well, I think that's coming perilously close to insubordination. After all, I'm the boss and I don't like my methods to be questioned. To liven up the game, one or more of your volunteer players could be a ringer, someone in on the scheme. Rehearse and role play ahead of time so they can add to the game, just as the manager now does. Rachel, the employees are grumbling. What are you going to do about that? Well, we could set up a new talking rule. Then employees couldn't get together and complain and, you know, stir things up. Excellent. We'll announce that next week. But what do we do about the surplus of red beads? We could require that the employees put in extra hours to hand select all the white bead shipments. Blanche, can we really afford all those extra hours to hand pick those white beads? No, we would have to pay overtime or else lay other people off. Lay people off is always an option, but there must be something else, Rachel? Well, we could have Blanche hire an extra person to look over the workers' shoulders and see what they're doing wrong. That's good, because obviously there's a problem here. Is holding the paddle at exactly a 30-degree angle going to do any good? Will more rules and procedures get rid of the red beads? Or blaming employees for a bad procedure? Companies spend thousands just to write and update procedures that don't get rid of the problems. Then, of course, we could always paint the red beads white. Cover all those red beads. What a great idea. Well, maybe not. The paint might rub off. What do you think, Blanche? It would probably rub off after the customer uses it for a while, so we could suggest it's a problem on their end. Interesting thought. I'll have to consider that. If we paint them over, we can make a bigger profit for a while and fix it later. Or maybe the problem will just go away.
Do problems ever just go away? Rarely. The red bead disappears only when you solve the problem for good. Everything else is a band-aid approach, a cover-up. Management would be wise to give the highest reward to workers who find long-term solutions. I have an idea. You can fire the bead supplier and go find another one. Good, good. It would be the fourth supplier in the past year. But there's obviously something wrong and we've got to do something. Amazing, isn't it? Four suppliers and not one of them could get it right? Dr. Deming stresses that customers and suppliers must clearly define what's expected of one another. Specifications should be measurable rather than based on arbitrary feelings. If a customer says, I want a 50% wool sweater, the supplier might wonder, does that mean the front is wool or the back? Well, let's just finish out this work week. Worker number one, this is your chance to show us that you can live up to your resume. To motivate you, I've started a competition between the divisions. The one with the least amount of red beads on the last day will get free dinners at Chow Lee's House of Pizza. Seven red beads. He's finished out the week with a score of 42, when by our quota he should have gotten no more than 10. I think we should fire him. What do you think, pink slip? If your volunteers are having trouble getting into the spirit of the game, or you sense attention is flagging, you can always get the audience more involved. You could even take their suggestions. The more outrageous, the better. If it gets out of hand, remember that you're the boss. Just take control again by ordering the players back to work. He did it. Worker number two reached the magic number. Less than four red beads. We're so proud of you. You get the dinner and the $5 bonus. That's the good news. The bad news is 32 is still far too many. So, unless you make 20 or less from now on, you'll never get the bonus again. And how would you feel about that? Not too good. Excellent. That's the spirit. We want winners here. Yes, only winners. <laughs>